Good afternoon and welcome to yet another edition of the big interviews on the Big Scope, India's first post cable live network. Now, today I've got somebody very interesting. Now, why I say that, I'll get to that later who that person is and what he does with his organization. And as a kid, and when we were growing up and our, when our parents gave us a smartphone, something used something wrong or awkward happened to your smartphone, what did you used to do? You used to run to the local shop like, boss, can you please repair this for so and so in rupees? If something happens to your dad's phone or your mom's phone, go to the local shop in your city, be like, oh, there is this particular vendor who can uh, help us solve this. That refurbishment market is now more than $4 billion in, in India. And there are many startups, even e-commerce players are trying to get a hand in that. One such player who went into this field way back in three or four years back is Yantra. And on the show today, I've got Jain Chap, the co-founder of Yantra. Chief, welcome to the show. Hi. Great. So tell me, I mean, there's so many things I want to ask you, I mean, what, 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 in terms of what you're doing, but I quickly want to get to the uh, all this, but I quickly want to understand uh, what made you and your co-founders come together at a particular period of time, what, three or four years back when you decided, you know, let's have an organization, let's have an online portal for refurbishment of phones and solve this. This, this is such an uh, unorganized market in India. It's still unorganized. There's so much potential in this market. So when, how did this happen between you and your co-founders, Chief? Okay, so let me, uh, we started in 2013. So that was like almost uh, a little more than four years, almost five years, I would say. So uh, in 2012, uh, me with two of my colleagues, Ankit and Anmol, mm -hmm. sort of our own experience is uh, we, we figured out that smartphone after sale service is something which really needs a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. If you take your memory back to 2012, was the time when uh, the smartphone started entering the market, market aggressively. Before that, it was all the uh, era of BlackBerry and Nokia. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So uh, we also had a, a Nokia phone. I mean, Ankit had a Nokia phone and that eventually broke up. So we were trying to figure it out and then I had a Blackberry that had a trouble. So the TATs were uh, amazingly like, I mean, nothing less than 30 days to get a phone fixed. We figured out that that is something that really needs attention. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, then with our initial research, we figured out that the market is pretty huge. Uh, almost India is uh, 400 million people in the country would have smartphones. Right. Mm -hmm. And everybody would need repair at some point of time and the experience at that point of time was pretty horrible. Mm -hmm. So we decided to come out with it with an idea of delivering repair at the doorstep in the mm -hmm. most convenient and easy way where the consumers can have peace of mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, we left our jobs which were pretty difficult uh, uh, in 2012 mm -hmm. and then take, uh, took this decision of starting a company which can deliver repair services at the customer mm -hmm. doorstep. Mm -hmm. So in 2013 we started that, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And uh, after uh, two years, in 2000, 2000, late 2015, we started out of our customer's demand, we started experimenting the refurb space and went aggressive uh, into the refurb space in early 2016. Okay. This is how uh, this actually okay. shaped up. Okay. So tell me interesting, I mean, you know, what really fascinates me, I mean, you know, you look at uh, the likes of Flipkart, I think Flipkart also, uh, 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 I mean, acquired some uh, refurbished, refurbished online uh, platform last year. Now, Amazon has their own way of looking do, uh, looking at refurbished smartphones. What has changed in the market? Because I believe there's this huge potential not only in these urban cities, and as you know this way better than I do, I think. What has seen, especially in smaller towns, have you seen more growth, especially in the tier three, tier four cities in terms of people coming onto your platform? Has that changed little? If, if it has, how difficult has it been for you to go out in the market and say in a smaller city, like boss, rather than going to that shop over there, I'd rather get the retailer on my platform and these customers will come. Has that mentality changed? Have you seen more customers from the smaller cities in India? So see, uh, one of the factors that one should understand is uh, that who is going to come and buy a repo phone. Mm -hmm. The market is strongly driven by two factors. One is affordability and second is aspiration, right? Mm -hmm. So if I look at uh, both the factors, affordability is which is majorly driving the tier two and tier three market, where people definitely want to own a smartphone and they really don't have a lot of money to spend on it. Mm -hmm. But even if you look at the urban markets where aspiration is pretty huge, mm -hmm. so let's say, all the young generation, college going crowd, or the uh, lower middle class or middle class people, mm -hmm. everybody wants to have an aspiration to own a high end Apple or a high end Samsung. But right. the real question is can you actually spend 60,000 rupees in buying a phone? Mm -hmm. So that is where a refurb market or refurb phone comes into the picture. But so coming it... back to the question that you had, but so uh, uh, see, ideally, when you... 
sorry to button, sorry to button, chief, but doesn't that take away the concept of aspiration away? I mean, because the tech refreshes are so uh, quick these days, so doesn't that take away the aspiration if a person wants to? I mean, there might. I mean, I, I know so many people who, for the sake of it, have bought uh, these uh, eighty thousand or ninety thousand rupees phone. But uh, sometimes they've even taken EMIs to buy that phone because they can't afford uh, to give eighty thousand at one go. So why would a? I mean, I just want to understand the mentality. Why would a person go for a refurbished phone knowing that? I mean, because there are so many easy EMI options available to buy that same phone first time. So where does the aspiration uh, concept go here? So see, uh, of course, there are payment options which makes the product thing lucrative, right? But if you look at the way uh, the innovation is coming up or the technology is changing, so every mm -hmm. one year there is a new launch, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say yeah. Apple would come out with a new set of products every year. Mm -hmm. And secondly, even if there are payment options, not everybody, end of the day, you have to pay it, right? Mm -hmm. And even if you get into an EMI, you'll be actually paying a higher amount of money. So yeah. there is a there is definitely an aspiration to own those products. And even, so let's say, for example, if you go to yantra.com today, you can buy an iPhone 6 for say 15,000 rupees and still choose and choose to pay through an EMI, right? So that makes the option more lucrative. Yeah. So that is where people who cannot actually afford to pay even 60,000 rupees, mm -hmm. even by EMIs, can come mm -hmm. to portals like Yantra or maybe mm -hmm. uh, go to one of our retail outlets where they can uh, pick up or refurbish products and still choose to pay through EMI. So we're trying to make it more affordable and accessible for everyone. Okay, okay, okay. That's a very fair point you mentioned when you try to make it affordable for ev everyone. But I'll come to that in one case. I just want to understand one other aspect of it. Now, you have a team, uh, I mean, I would say you have a tech team which takes care of all these uh, technical hash refurbishments at the back end. Now, do you, I, I'm, I'm sure you also collaborate or also you have these retailers on ground that you have collaborated with. That's true, right? So uh, coming back to uh, when we when we started uh, in 2016, the idea was we really want to spend millions and millions of rupees in building up an e-commerce, right? Which is uh, which is uh, uh, for consumers, Yantra.com. So mm. we definitely started to build Yantra.com, but parallelly we also built the e-commerce platform, which is a closed source platform today for retailers. So today we have some 30,000 partners whom we work with across 250 cities. So that okay. gives us an image reach in tier 2 and tier 3 as well. So we have, uh, say, uh, uh, 24,000 partners right now, which is this month will be, Feb ending will be approximately 30,000 partners. We want to take that to 100,000 partners across the country in, say, over, over 500 cities, right? Mm -hmm. So that gives us an image reach where we'll be also be selling it through the retail channel that we have. Okay. 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 So, so the, are these are, are these only uh, when when I say are these partners only say uh, look uh, say a uh, store in a, even in a say a city like Delhi uh, who is used to be uh, in refurbished with business. I mean, are they those kind of folks also who have collaborated with you? So, so we see participation from all the segments of the retail. Let's say there is a category A retail and category B or a category C retail, right? So majority of our retailers would be category B and C, but eventually uh, what is happening in front-end sales is the margins mm -hmm. have been badly shrinked shrink from the uh, category A retailers as well, mm -hmm. whereas they are selling new phones and not making a lot of money. So we see participation from those kind of retailers as well, but primarily if I, if I have to uh, uh, figure it out and see where the majority of the chunk lies in, that would be category B and a category C retail. Okay, okay, interesting. And and since you have such a big network, how do you maintain three important things? And you, like, how do you look at fixed prices uh, and even the quality of the product and also timelines in terms of, okay, we can deliver this product to you in this point of time. So how do you maintain these three uh, elements considering you've, you've got such a decent uh, number of people working associated with you from across the country in terms of retailers and all these kind of folks? Yeah, so, uh, so our so the, you know, the place where we differentiate is we have our own processing hubs. So we have two processing hubs back in Bangalore and one in NCR. So we are able to cater South Market from Bangalore and North Market from North Market from uh, so from Delhi and here. Mm -hmm. So our delivery TAT is in the cities where we have our own offices. So in Delhi, we have the capability to deliver it within, within eight hours. So let's say if a retailer is placing an order, they get the product, let's say people who are ordering the we see retailers coming coming to our platform even at 12 12 a.m. or 2 a.m. in the night. They yeah. order it, and the moment they open the shop in the morning, the product gets delivered to them. Wow. So today our delivery TATs would be as good as any of the standard e-commerce in the companies. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have to benchmark, you can say Amazon and Flipkart. 
Today we deliver at 7,000 pin codes in less than 30 hours. So we wow. we have partnered up with the leading logistics companies in the country. So the experience is as good as you shopping on Amazon or Flipkart. The delivery DHs are as strong as that. Coming back to the quality, we have built world-class refurbishment hubs, which have the we, we follow 5S principle, uh, which is the stand, uh, industry standard in terms of any manufacturing or repair units. We we have repair levels starting from level zero to level four. So just okay. for the understanding, level zero is the basic level repair, and level four is the most critical repair. So we have specialized teams who work on it. Uh, we have our own proprietary uh, software that we have built in house that monitors the quality of the product before the product is shipped out out from the warehouse. So our return rates are even less than one percent, right? And that is how we have managed to scale up pretty rapidly. Today we sell approximately fifty thousand phones a month. Which is okay. say fifteen hundred phones over fifteen hundred phones a day. Oh wow, that's lovely. Is is this a, a quarter number or is it a yearly number? No, no, no. This is a monthly number. Monthly number. Oh, that's amazing. So two things over here. This yes. is really interesting what you sound because I was about to ask. My next question was on the same lines in terms of how are you? How do you compete with all these e-commerce firms and even? the smartphone vendors who are slow and these chinese smartphone vendors who are slowly to, who are trying to capture the tier 3 tier 4 market but also gradually they're trying to do what nokia did once upon a time have so many service centers across the country i don't think any one company has matched that samsung in a way has tried doing that so is 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 delivery the only usp you have when you compete with the likes of all these various smartphone vendors who are also trying to do the same thing have a service center said i'll refurb refurbish your phone anything happens i you come to my center we'll do it for you don't have to go to these uh, neutral folks and even the e-commerce firms are trying to do that so it's delivery only one mechanism that you are competing with this is any other way are you competing with any other frontier are you competing with them trying to be better at them so so let me tell you this so yantra hmm. promise is all around hmm. making your life easy giving of mind beat the customer comes from for a repair perspective or if he has bought a refurb food so today today we have our own in house logistics and repair centers across all the tier 1 cities so we operate out of the seven cities where we have our own repair center with the capability to do l0 to l4 customers across 14000 pin codes gets door step repair service so let's say if anybody even in tier 2 and tier 3 they are buying a refurbished phone from yantra they still get the door step pick up and delivery right mm -hmm. so they don't actually have to go to the service center mm -hmm. so we were the first one in the country to bring door step repair for consumers and we pretty much believe that people would not have the time or we do not want our customers to get through the hassle of going to a going and finding out a repair center where they can actually get the product service. Mm -hmm. so we come to the consumers so in a way in in, in a repair or after sale service area our mm -hmm. services would be at edge with even if you compare to the leading brands in the country like samsung mm -hmm. or for that matter you com compare with any other brand right mm -hmm. so it's the next level of the services that we are trying to create we have already created actually and we are delivering it on site to consumers across 14000 people mm -hmm. okay interesting so our promise is our promise is we'll give you quality products we'll give you best all class services when it comes to after sale if there is a problem Hmm. Interesting, interesting. So uh, to to keep to that point, you mentioned something very interesting where you have this uh, four pronged approach. How you in terms of uh, completely redo a smartphone? Explain me that approach a little bit more. What goes into it? And and secondly, uh, what's the more what's the set of most common issues? Uh, Which come under the garb of repair that you folks have to do at your end. I mean, is it just screen replacement, or is it some physical button replacement, or or, or something to do with your hardware? What's the most common repair issues that has sprung up with you folks, and what has changed in the last at least two years, if I can understand? So I'll see more and more smartphones coming in. Of course, they have bigger screen. They will be more prone to damages. Mm -hmm. So today, a forty percent of the repairs that we do would be screen replacements. but mm -hmm. the remaining 60% would be like mm -hmm. most critical repairs also mm -hmm. which where the phone is dead or this or, or you drop your phone in water something like that mm -hmm. but the uh, 40% would be screen replacement remaining 60% would be led by a uh, different level of repairs starting from a charging jack repair to a motherboard or a, maybe a integrated chip repair or replacement mm -hmm. interesting interesting also you know uh, I want to understand one thing. I mean, uh, it goes back to the very first thing you uh, mentioned to me today. Now, I look at a lot of these uh, Chinese smartphone vendors who are trying to, and the whole fight is under the under twenty thousand category. As you mentioned, getting an iPhone six at rupees fifteen thousand, great. So many people would want to do that, buy that phone. But you know, a lot of these phones, 
lot of people in India will own a smartphone for the first time coming this year and the year after that. Uh, people who who still own a feature phone, they will jump from the feature phone to the smartphone segment. And I've talked to so many smartphone vendors. I'm not talking about the top three or the top four. There are so many new smartphone vendors who are planning to uh, come into India. And was we just want to target the under ten thousand market, under fifteen thousand market. Now, how do you come? Is is that? Do you look at that as something of a competition? or is you you just let it be like okay fine new smartphone vendors are coming good for us i mean we have more repair options so so see in this in this like you said you know a lot of feature phone users would be moving towards smartphone right yeah. so now you have to understand that somebody who has spent a thousand rupees or a 1500 rupees at maximum yeah. in buying a feature phone will he can he afford a 15000 rupees or say yeah. even a 10000 rupees phone? Yeah. so for us i think it's, a, it's creating a huge opportunity even the sub 15,000 category or a sub 10,000 category, which actually does very well in the repo category because the price goes as low as say 4,000 rupees, right? Mm -hmm. So I think for us, it's a great opportunity. Let, let more and more vendor come. And uh, if there are more smartphones, I think in both the ways, even in terms of the repair business or for an opportunity to refurb and sell a refurbished product, I mean, there's a, uh, the opportunity would increase. So I don't see that as a competition coming up. Yeah. Fair, fair, absolutely fair. And, and in your experience, uh, I mean, uh, the two, um, two interesting things I want to understand. I mean, considering the numbers that you have seen in the last two, three years, uh, which phones, which brand of smartphones have sold the most from your platform A? And second, uh, which cities have contributed to the most? People from which cities in India have contributed the most in terms of coming on your platform, whatever, for whatever reason it may be? So if I have to name a few cities uh, uh, which have really done well, so uh, some of the cities in UP like Lucknow and Bijnor, they have really, they've really picked up very well from wow. the time we have. Mm. Even if I look at from a retail perspective, mm. uh, these cities where a lot of traction is coming up, then mm. even if you look at cities, in, uh, I mean, uh, mm. some cities in Karnataka, uh, they, they're coming aggressively doing very well. Mm. Uh, in Tamil Nadu, in South also, there is a great traction coming up. Indore does very well for that matter if you have to go uh, so that would be Indoor would be among top 10, right? Mm -hmm. So you see a mix of response coming from tier 2 and tier 3 shipping up pretty aggressively. Some of the metros also do very well, like, like likewise Delhi is at number 4 right now. Mm -hmm. If I look at the overall sales that we do. Okay. So right. yeah, I mean, uh, some of the tier 2, tier 3 cities are coming up pretty aggressively and some of the metro cities are also contributing. Yeah. Okay, interesting, interesting. One last thing. What about insurance then? I mean, do you also sell insurance for some of these high-end smartphones? Is that something uh, you have got as a query from your customers over the years? And how do you look at insurance for any of these products on your on your platform? So, see, warranty is something where customer definitely needs a peace of mind, right? So, Yantra sells, by default, we give six months warranty on products that we sell. We are working on extending that to a year's time with the help of some partners. However, if I talk about insurance, which is majorly uh, a theft or a physical damage protection mm -hmm. from a consumer point of view. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I see that as a push product, not a lot of customers would be, I mean, asking for it. But yes, mm -hmm. there are uh, there are players into uh, that particular business doing very well as of now. Mm -hmm. We do not plan to enter that business mm -hmm. at, at this mm -hmm. point of time. Mm, absolutely lovely. One last thing. So, I mean. I mean, 2018 is a very, um, these two, three years have been really, really good, really interesting uh, for anybody who has to do anything with uh, smartphones uh, in, and in, even with the accessory market in India. So with the influx of so many more phones in India and the time, I mean, uh, the tech refresh cycles, less, the time period for tech refresh cycles lessening a lot, what's going to be new in terms of Yantra in the next two quarters in 2018. What more can we expect? I mean, it, I, I know the funding that has come to you in the last one year or so, but what more can we expect in 2018? What different direction do we see you going apart from just smartphones and repurbishment? So uh, as a category, if you say, then we'll continue to focus on smartphones only. We do not want to enter any other category. However, Yantra promised to consumers would be, would be to bring the best repair services in the most convenient way. Secondly, we would we will try to make smartphone refurbished products more accessible and more more affordable for everyone. Mm -hmm. And we would bring some quality accessories, which are which we believe that will go pretty along with smartphones. So, for example, let's say quality power banks or maybe a very high quality chargers, data cables, mm -hmm. etc. Okay. We do not want to bring the entire uh, offering on the accessories front. Mm -hmm. 
but few of the very common accessories which our customers would demand we would definitely try to bring the best quality and make them available for our customers okay on the repair right. network side uh, we operate into seven cities mm -hmm. and the idea would be to expand into uh, say 15 cities uh, in next two to three quarters Absolutely, that really sounds interesting. So you want to uh, go into more cities, you know, which makes more sense also. But thank you, Chief, so much for joining us uh, on the big scope and explaining how big the refurbishment market is in India and what you folks are planning to do next. But thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. It was pleasure talking to you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks. So viewers, that thank was Jain Jaff from explaining to us why and how the refurbished market in India for smartphones especially has changed over the years and what more needs to be done considering there are so many smartphones like every other day you see a new smartphone being launched into in India. Thank you so much for watching up. This was the big interviews at the Big Scope.